All right, share my screen. Okay. Hi, everyone. Thanks for joining us this evening. Um, my team, y'all can see the Panhellenic Association. Awesome. Sweet, sweet. I'm actually going to stop share for just a second, switch some things around. We are going to give everyone a couple of minutes to get logged in and then we'll get started. All right. Hi, everyone. If you're just joining us, we're going to wait just a few more seconds and see if we have anyone else joining us this evening. Um, if not, you're going to go ahead and get started. There'll be just a few moments. Thank you so much for um, giving us your evening and learning more about the family role in Panhellenic recruitment. It's a big one. All right, we're kind of slowing down. So I'm gonna go ahead and get started. So um, y'all are not with us the entire night, even though we would love that. Um, don't want y'all have to be on a, a Zoom webinar this entire time. So um, welcome to the parent and family webinar. We um, kind of, like I said, we're going to be going over what does the family role look like during Panhellenic recruitment. Um, we're going to do a brief recap about our organizations, um, show some really great stats about them and their high GPAs. Um, and then we're going to go into more logistics of what, you know, recruitment looks like. We get really nitpicky in the details of what, it, how do selections work? How does it work on our side? What do we see? Um, selections and then into bid matching when we're doing, you know, you're you're making whatever chapter you want to be with. So uh, we're going to go with all into those details. Um, first things first, this is going to be a, as you can tell, this is already a different setup than a normal Zoom call. This is a Zoom webinar. Um, you do not have the ability to have a camera. Um, there's, it's really just seeing all of the four panelists here. Um, so if you have any questions, that's why we're going to have our team introduce themselves in just a second. But um, if you have any questions, there's going to be a Q&A function towards, for me, it's the top of my screen, maybe towards the bottom of your screen. Um, that's where you can type in, text in any questions that you have. And my team here or myself are going to be um, answering those throughout the presentation. But um, again, uh, we do have a raise your hand function. Um, not sure we can really use it with a Zoom webinar. I'm kind of surprised why we still have that. But um, if you have a question, just go ahead and put it in the Q&A. All right. Um, I want to have some time to introduce the awesome people on this call with me tonight. Um, if you all can just do a quick little intro of your name, position. We'll do Lauren, Kennedy, and then Kylie. Hi, y'all. My name is Lauren, and I serve as the Recruitment Vice President of Programming. Hi everyone, my name is Kennedy and I am the Director of Recruitment Operations and I cannot to wait, wait to meet all of your students. Hi everybody, my name is Kylie Frisbee. Uh, I work on the Greek team at OU with Emily and I'm really excited for you all to get to know a little bit more about our awesome community and the great work that Emily and all of her students are doing. So thanks for being here. It's the students, it's the students. Kylie's our Associate Director. She's boss, so um, very, very proud and very happy to have her in the office. Um, Kylie is also doing the Interfraternity Council recruitment right now, so you will have both of us going and doing all the recruitment things together. 
Okay, let's get started. I'm gonna move y'all over here for me. Um, so yeah, a brief, brief recap of our community. So we have 11 great organizations, um, roughly around 3,300 members total right now, total active members. Um, as you can see, we are a very big community. Um, we, us with the Interfraternity Council, we are um, more of like your more populated Greek organizations. We are only, the IFC and Panhellenic are two of five Greek councils that we he have here at OU. Um, we are always, you know, under the understanding that sometimes we'll go through Panhellenic recruitment, um, maybe not realizing that we have other, other opportunities to join a sorority um, here at OU. So if there's ever an opportunity where, you know, this is not your thing, um, totally get that. That's totally understandable. Um, and we, and if you still want to be Greek, we can still definitely get you plugged into one of our other Greek organizations here at OU. So we love them. They're awesome. Um, we love getting to work closely with all of our organizations. Um, community values, going to go briefly over these. We have our community values in leadership, service, sisterhood, and scholarship. We will see in just a second on this slide over here. Um, with our scholarship, we not only like raise funds to help students throughout their college experience, but we also are giving our a lot of our time into um, studying and preparing for your college courses. Um, you'll see this beautiful, beautiful all community, all member community GPA. That's a 3.46. It's awesome. Um, Grades are a big thing in Panhellenic. You will see with your new member year, and sometimes I think it bleeds into your sophomore year, your second year into the membership, you'll have some required study hours. This is a way for to kind of help your student get acclimated to all things college, um, not with along with being uh, associated in extracurricular activities. We're also trying to help you navigate what it means to be in, in college. It's vastly different from being in high school um, for some high schools. And so it takes a lot more time to get studying and prepared and feel really equipped for your college courses. So you'll have some study hours to get done. Um, they get to do them at chapter facilities, the libraries, all those things. But it's a way to kind of help you start getting used to being in a college setting. All right, um, leadership. This is obvious right here. We have so many students in our community alone that love to get involved. Um, Kind of obvious too because they are involved in a Greek organization and in a dedicated organization as such as you know when you go Greek you go Greek not just for your college experience but you are a member for life. So we see these students on and off campus holding leadership positions. Um, again, forgot to update that, but that is into our 2021 um, and then 2021 up in here too. Our $500,000 plus money raised in our philanthropies. Each of the 11 organizations have their local and national philanthropies, and they'll get to talk more about them during round two, philanthropy day of recruitment. But um, as you can see, we have a really, a lot of dedicated students. Um, we do a lot of great events that raise a lot of money. Um, we don't only give financially, but we give our hours, we give time too. So um, as you can tell, being a part of a Greek organization expects a lot out of the members. We gotta make some, good grades. We've got to, you know, be present um, and be ready to give to our organizations. So it's a lot to think about when thinking about going through recruitment, but um, hopefully we'll have a lot of presentations and you can, can kind of calm those nerves and get you ready for being active member and in college as well. Okay. Um, Wanted to briefly go through some of those because I really want to focus on the family role and get into the, like more of the like logistics and examples for recruitment. Okay, so y'all have a very, very big role um, when you have a student that is going through this process. Um, sounding board, support system, celebrating consular, partners and friends. Being a sounding board and being that support system, I really feel like it goes really hand in hand. Um, for me, I am a first generation student um, when I, you know, going into college, obviously I don't have a family member that was Greek. So we had no idea what to expect going into the recruitment process. So if you're a little freaked out, we've been there, we totally get it. Um, and I feel you on that, but we were navigating, you know, what does college look like? And then, you know, what is recruitment? What is going through this process look like? So I feel you on that. 
um, a lot of time that I would call my parent and I would just say, hey, I just need to talk things out. I don't know how I'm feeling. Um, having that person there to just listen and say, hey, like you've got this. I'm supporting you throughout this process. I know you're tired. Um, you got this and you can keep going. A big thing of what we are really trying to help students navigate with this process is making their own decision. Sometimes this may be the first big decision that they're gonna make on their own. So really, really supporting them of like, hey, I think you are finding these things about this organization that you are just liking. This is what I hear. It sounds like you need to go with the place that you're getting the most best vibes with. Um, just as you are trying to support your child through this experience, we are doing the same, kind of bouncing around here, but we wanna be partners and friends with you along this journey of supporting your student throughout recruitment. With the long hours, the long days, we just went through Camp Crimson. We've, um, it's our second week of school. Sometimes we're tired, sometimes we're emotional. I think I cried during recruitment and I didn't even know why I was crying. My mom was like, I think you're tired. So um, be ready to also be, hey, like go get some sleep, go drink some water, take a walk, take a breath. Um, and if they need someone, a buddy to hang out with to do that, we have some students that are serving as their recruitment guides that are more than happy and so well equipped to have conversations with your students. So it kind of sees um, we have a lot of people on our staff that are here to help, you know, bring your students experience to be the best that it can possibly be. Um, if at any time, though, you need us to say, like, reach out to your student, we can always get them connected to their row gamma and say, hey, Emily is needing someone to kind of chat with tonight. Um, do you mind going by and checking on them? So we wanna partner with you, like I said, throughout this process, if there's ever anything that we can do to you know, reach out to them, help them, whatever they're doing, uh, please let us know. Some tips and tricks while supporting your student listen to their frustrations. This process can be scary and confusing and they may not want any action, but just someone to listen. Um, you know, I think about this with like my own students when I'm working with them, whenever they are just ranting to me and they have some things they wanna get off their chest. I'm always asking like, hey, wanna double check? Like, do you, do you just need a rant? Cause if so, like I'm here, um, do you want some advice? Like I always ask them in that moment. So. Um, sometimes the student's just going to want to rant and that's totally fine. And they can come to your Rogama or come to one of us and we can just talk out our feelings. Um, but sometimes they're wanting some advice too. So equipping them with the, you know, things that you are hearing from them of like, you know, I think you're leaning towards this decision or whatever. This kind of bleeds into my next point that this process is your student's experience um, and not yours. I understand that we might have, I know that might be a little intense to hear, but we have some go through some people going through recruitment that are legacies. And we are so, so excited that you had a wonderful experience during your college years. We are, and beyond, because again, these experiences last beyond college. Um, this is your time for your student. And we should be so excited and so ready for them to make their own decision. So um it helps create a lot less stress on their shoulders as well if we are supporting what they wanna do. Again, I know that's kind of hard to hear because I know it would be awesome for my daughter one day to be the chapter that I was involved with, but um, I would just be so happy if they were able to find that connection and find that click with anyone at OU. Um, be intentional in your conversations with your student. Let them come to decisions on their own and trust that they can make the tough decisions. So they've got it. You've supported them throughout this entire process and from birth. You guys are um, going to be great, great partners to us in this next, next coming weeks. And I feel like they're going to be so, so ready to make those tough decisions when it comes to it. Okay. Family role, we got that taken care of. Um, some recruitment basics. So now we're going to go into more talking about the schedule of recruitment. Um, so recruitment basics, we have our schedule right here. So round one is our open house, go to a max of 11 chapters. You will see here that it says max of eight, max of five, max of two. 
we, during round one, you're going to go to every chapter that we have here at OU, all 11. Round one is split up into two days with going to five one day, six the other, or that might be split for you. Um, after that, we have um, a limited option that you can go to be invited back to a max of eight, five, or two chapters. Just as the selection process is happening, as the recruitment process is happening, um, we're all needing to kind of zero in on who is vibing with which chapter. It, this limiting of the max of number that you can get invited back to is what's helping us all get to that, that point. If not, recruitment would be like going on for, for even more longer than it already is. Um, so again, this max number that you can be invited back to We'll see some data from last year's recruitment um, just because we get a full schedule or if we don't get a full schedule, that does not mean that that person, um, that we need to judge our success from how many people we're invited back to, how many chapters we're invited back to. A lot of times students find that, identify their success in I was invited back to all chapters every day, all the max that I could do. That's great. Um, not everyone's experience is the same, and that doesn't mean that it's less than. My experience, I, round two, I think I had a, mat, I went to five chapters, round three, four, and then I was lucky to have um, two chapters that night. So I had, you know, the, the option to make a decision between two. So again, we're going to go into some more statistics later to see um, kind of how that data unfolded last year, but please, please encourage your student if they are upset about not having, you know, a max of eight chapters invited back to that night, that does not mean that their in recruitment is going to be um, a bad experience. Sometimes equipping them to also just keep going and just see what happens is a, um, this is a great learning tool for that. We'll tell students too that this is a great, great, great practice for interviews. Um, was it a little sad to not get some invited back to the, some of the chapters that I really vibed with? Oh, heck yeah, I was. Um, that is going to go really, really into play whenever we are interviewing for leadership positions at OU. Just as the students on this call are, you know, working with us, they also had to interview for these positions. Um, pretty much a lot of the opportunities at OU you do have to interview for, um, with a handful of them of if you just want to show up and be a part of our general membership, you can definitely do that. So this is a really great practice of rejection. Um, it's gonna sting at first and I know it's not great, but um, it's a part of it and it's part of interviewing for positions. It, it's a part of interviewing for jobs. So this is a really, really great first experience of that. Um, just a quick, quick little word right here, PNM, that's potential new member and that is your students. We're going to use this acronym a lot as we're going through the bid matching examples. And these are your awesome Rogamas from like 2019 recruitment. They were great. We love them. Purple is our Hanalina color. Okay, so now we're going to do a quick, quick example of how selections work. Selections are through round one to round three work different than your last round of recruitment, round four. During round one through three, the chapters are voting, making their selections on their end, and the PNMs are going to be doing the exact same thing. You're going to be ranking and saying, I would love to be back to certain chapters. Um, if I'm not invited back to these, I would be okay with that. So let's do a quick, quick example of that. So we are in the setting of we just got done with round two. Round two is when we talk about our philanthropies. It's great. We see all how we put all of our time and funds into organizations. Um, and then it's just the end of round two and we're going into round three. So we'll have chapters right here. These are just random chapters at OU um, or doesn't have to be at OU. But you will see that this line is cutting off after five because as we go from round two where you can have a max of eight chapters uh, round three is a max of five. So this student went in and they put in their top preferences of the chapters that they um, had really great connections with. And then they ranked the, low, the last three that they would be okay to not be invited back to. We will tell the, the PNMs 
you do not have to rank these. The rank does not matter. The ranking does matter right here. Because as we will see, this chapter did their voting and this PNM did their voting. And they are going to be asked back to that organization that next day. Now, why we say that the ranking matter is down here is because you'll see right here, there was not a, an arrow that they both had great votings on either side. The X is right there showing that they were not asked back to that organization. So then the line moved down and then pushed that, that chapter up. The way our system works is we are always trying to put as many chapters with your student um, just so that they can have the fullest schedule that they can possibly have. And so if the selections work from your number six ranked chapter um, and we're able to get invited back to the organization, we will always try to fluff, um, make your schedule as packed as possible. So um, chapter made their selections and then the student did here. It did not um, get asked back for the next day. We are able to then go down to our next ranked chapter and attend them for round three. Okay, again, that selections rounds one through three. Um, chapters are voting and the PNMs are voting at the same time. All right, bid matching. Bid matching works a lot differently than um, preference, or excuse me, rounds one through three. So round four is preference round. It's the last round of recruitment process. They are going to be much longer rounds to they're very much more um, showing. It's this chapter showing their hearts for their organization. Um, they'll do ceremonies. Sometimes they'll sing and sometimes they're tears because we're all tired and they just love being a part of their organizations. There are a few things that I want to touch before we go into the example of how bid matching works. So just, um, excuse me, when we are doing our selections after preference rounds, we are also going to be signing a document called a Membership Recruitment Acceptance Binding Agreement. That's a very long name, so we call them Maraba. <laughs> Um, the student is signing this document, and this document is a binding agreement that binds this chap this PNM to the chapter for a full calendar year if they are matched with that organization. In our examples, you will see what that means about being matched to the organization. Um, the students make their preference. The chapters have them on a ranked list. They get matched. It's great. They are now bound to that organization for a full calendar year. And they cannot, if they want to, you know, whatever, they have to be bound to that organization for a full, full year. Um, we will see with this um, membership acceptance binding agreement, it basically outlines all of the options that the student has going into preference round. There are three options, I think, total. Um, one of them is withdraw. You can, re you can withdraw at any point during recruitment if this is something that you are not wanting to go through anymore, it's not your vibe. I love the story when Kylie tells it, but we literally had a student like day one or round one, the doors opened and they started singing and chanting and like bringing her in and she said, hell no, and <laughs> came to the Panhellenic headquarters and immediately withdrew from recruitment. She was like, it's not for me. And I said, whatever, that's your decision. We, we love that you have made that decision on your own. Where can I get you connected to um, somewhere else on campus to make sure you feel supported and um, ready to be an OU student? So we totally get it. You can withdraw at any point during recruitment, but you also have that option at preference round after the end of those parties. So um, you have the option to withdraw. You have the option to um, maximize your options, which is prepping both of the chapters that you went to that night. Um, so you will make a preference between alpha or beta chapter, and you're going to be maximizing your options in that way. We will go over maximizing your options in our example. Um, you have an option to intentionally single pref, which used to be called suicide bid, as you can um, obviously see why we don't call it that anymore. Um, that is to say I had two chapters I went to back, I went back on preference round. I only want to preference one organization, and that is called intentional single prefing, and that is um, 
one, making your one selection, so ISP. Long story short, um, when we are setting quota, which I will go ahead and get over here, it's easier to see. Quota is we take all of our Marabas and divide them by 11, and that is how we set quota. Quota is, for this example, set at three, but it is never set at three during the actual recruitment process. So again, quota is taking all of the signed contracts that night, the membership recruitment acceptance binding agreement, dividing by how many chapters we have, 11. And that is the number that we're gonna use to set quota. Okay, maximizing your options, ISP, we're gonna see how all of those options, how the different options kind of go into play in these examples. So first we're gonna start off with Visha. Um, we are only looking at two chapters during this example as well. This is the alpha chapter and the beta chapter, obviously not real chapters here at OU. So Visha, Visha is on the first of alpha and beta's list. She had a great experience. Both of these chapters loved Visha. Um, again, this is a ranked list and it's different from rounds one through three. Um, and they are submitting a ranked order so we can set quota and see where everyone kind of falls with that line. Visha went into um, bid matching and said, I want to pref an alpha, alpha chapter over beta chapter. So this is an example of Visha maximizing her options. Because of where Visha falls online um, for the alpha chapter and the beta chapter, she is going to become an alpha because that is what she made as her first preference. Um, if you make it above the quota line for both organizations, it then depends on which chapter was ranked one and which one was two. So um, that back here was just solidifying Visha is going to be an alpha. Congrats to Visha. So there she is, check mark. She's crossed off of beta's list. And now the quota line moves down. When we're actually doing bid matching and we're processing all this information, quota is like an organic line that's just going to be constantly moving. Um, so in real time, it's just going and it's not going to be as kind of slowed down right here, but this is just kind of showing you, um, slowed down a little bit, how the quota line can kind of vary depending on what matches are made. So now we're going to look at Naomi. Naomi went to, um, two chapters that night. She had two chapters invite her back. So she is number two on alpha's list and she is number two on beta's list. Naomi went into her preferences and she said, I want a preference beta over alpha. So again, we made it above the quota line. It then goes to what the chap the student prepped. Naomi is going to be a beta because that was what she prepped first. Okay, Naomi is here and she has moved off of alpha's list or she's marked off of al alpha's list. And now the quota line is back from being three to now for, for this example. All right, Kylie, shout out to Kylie. Um, we are gonna look at Kylie on the alpha list. She's four, she's right above the quota line. And then she is number seven. So she did not make above quota line. In her selections, she said, I wanna be a beta over alpha. Um, she is going, um, based on her selections, she is going to be an alpha. So. This is where maximizing your options really, really comes into play. Um, no, Kylie did not make it to her first, what the chapter she prepped as first, as beta. Because she maximized her options, she attended two parties that night. She wrote two parties down during her preferences. That is Kylie maximizing her options. And when you maximize your options, you are guaranteed a bid. We always, always, you know, hope and we get all of our first preferences when we maximize our options and we write both of our chapters down. Um, but sometimes we'll see right here, we don't make it above the quota line. So then we are still matched to an organization because Kylie maximized her options. When you maximize your options, you are guaranteed a bid. So we um, are maybe a little like sad that we didn't get our first preference, but it's still such a great opportunity that we're still matched to an organization here at OU and are able to get that chapter experience. Again, Kylie is an alpha. Okay, now we're gonna take a look at Daria. 
So Daria is number three on Beta's list. And she's gonna be a little bit lower than what's showed on your screen. We'll say she's like number 10. So Daria went to two chapters that night and she said, you know what? I'm just really not, um, I think I'm just really, really vibing so well with beta. I think I only wanna be a beta. This is an example of a student intentionally single prepping. It is a rumor that we hear that students should not intentionally single prep and that is very much, um, as you say, it is a rumor. <laughs> um, this is an option that you can make. It is an option that is listed on the Marabas that a student can make this decision. We never discourage a student if they want to ISP. We just wanna make sure that they are aware that it lowers their ability or chance to be matched to an organization. So just as this happened right here for Daria, um, I'm going to go back to uh, limits your opportunities to being matched to an organization. Because we are not maximizing your options, we are not able to guarantee you a bid from the one chapter you prepped. So that is how it lowers your opportunity to being matched to an organization is because you did not maximize your options during preference round. So Daria is number three on beta's list and she is number 10 on Alpha's list. Daria prepped Beta and did not prep Alpha. She ISP'd for Beta. Daria made it above the quota line, and so she got really lucky, and Daria is a Beta. Again, as long as you are above that quota line, you are you know, going to be matched to that organization if you prepped them and you made it through ISP. Again, we are not discouraging students to do that. That is solely their decision if they want to do that. We just always, always make sure they understand the possible risk of not matching with an organization. Okay, so now we're going to take a look at Sam. So Sam is number four on beta's list. And let's see, in a one event. So it is also an option, just as we've kind of talked about during the other previous rounds that just because we have a max of two chapters to be invited back to during preference, sometimes we have students that have one chapter to attend that next that, uh, um, that evening. Um, then you'll come in, you'll do the same thing, you'll make your selections, you'll sign the Maraba. And it's really great because we have one chapter that we attended to this night. We press that one chapter, you're in that chapter. There is no guessing what chapter it's gonna be if I made it above quota. Because you maximize your options, you have that one selection to make, you are going to be that organization, be a part of that organization. So when a student, it, we are you know, confirming their selections, they say, okay, how many parties did you attend to tonight? They'll say, I had one, I prepped this organization. We like cheer, dance, because we know exactly what's gonna happen tomorrow. So, it's really exciting and those students can kind of like sleep easy that night because they're like, I'm going to bid day. Um, so yay, congrats to Sam. She is going to be a beta. Okay, yay, Sam. Now we're gonna take a look at Jess. So Jess is had two chapters that night. Jess is number three on Alpha's list. She's number six on beta's list. She's above the, or below the quota line. Jess preferenced a beta over alpha. Okay, so because Jess preference beta over alpha, Jess and, and Jess maximized her options. She is going to be an alpha because she did not make it above the quota line on the, the chapter she preferenced first. She did, however, make it on the second organization that was her second preference. So that's another example right there of maximizing your options. Okay, taking a look at Rachel now. So Rachel is right here. She had two parties that night. She had um, only listed one. Rachel is below the alphas, is below the quota line for alpha. And we do not see her on, you know, visibly see her on the screen. She is like number 15 for beta's list. Jess, Rachel, sorry. Rachel intentionally single prepped. She ISP'd alpha and she did not make it above the quota line. So this is what we call an ISP or a um, unmatched ISP. 
So um, they did not make it above the quota line and they are not matched to an organization. But this does mean that they are still eligible to participate in our informal recruitment process called continuous open bidding, or we call it COB. As long as you are not matched to an organization, so that could be I withdrew, complete release, which we'll talk about that in a little bit, and then your intentional single prof, ISP unmatch, you did not match with an organization, you are still eligible to participate in COB. COB is when we, on bid day, I reset campus total using the average or median chapter size for all the 11 organizations. We'll have chapters that fall below that average chapter size, usually about five organizations. Those five organizations that are not above that average chapter size in their total are eligible to participate in COB. Just because an organization is eligible to participate in our informal recruitment process does not mean that they're always going to do so. It is up to the chapter if they want to continue recruiting. Um, so long story short, Rachel is unmatched. She intentionally single preferenced and was not matched to an organization. If she still wants to have the Panhellenic experience, she could reach out to us and say, hey, um, I understand you know, it, it didn't happen for me, but I still want to get involved in a Panhellenic um, chapter. We can let her know which chapters are eligible for COB that semester. Um, but if not, we do COB all over again in the spring, and that is our only recruitment process that we have in the spring. COB is a lot less structured. There's no rounds or anything. It's really, really chill. Sometimes it's just grabbing a, a cup of coffee with someone or going to dinner, and you're talking about that chapter's experience, asking them, and then it's usually like, hey, you want to be a sister? And they're like, yes. So sometimes if a student is just overwhelmed by the recruitment process, how you know structured it all is and how long it is, they're like, I want to do this, but I want to wait for COB. And I'm like, great, let's process your withdrawal paperwork and let's get you, you know, connected to our interest page and all that stuff for COB. So um, Rachel was unmatched, but still able to participate in COB if she so chooses to. Okay. Anya. So Anya had, um, she is right here on beta's list. She went into preference round and said, you know what, I just don't think I am ready to make this commitment. It's a very big commitment. Um, I want to withdraw and I still want to be eligible for COB. So students still have that option. Again, you have that option their entire time during recruitment to withdraw and take yourself out of the selection process. So um, she got to preference round and said, I'm just not a thousand percent sure I want to COB and see who's eligible. I'm going to wait. So she withdrew from recruitment. She is unmatched and able to go through informal recruitment if she wants to. Okay, Hallie. Hallie is number six on Alpha's list. And then Hallie is number eight on Beta's list. Hallie went into um, preference round, after preference round, made her selections and ranked Alpha over Beta. As you can see, Hallie is below the quota line for both alpha and beta. Because we say when you maximize your options, you are guaranteed a bid, you're guaranteed to be matched to an organization. Hallie is going to be a quota addition. So again, because we say you are ma maximizing your options, you're guaranteed a bid, Hallie is going to be a quota addition for either alpha or beta. We don't know which chapter she's going to be matched with because quota additions happen after the, the software has processed everyone's selection. So after the quota line has moved and selections and things like that were happening off of each chapter's list. So Hallie is gonna be in an organization and that's so awesome. We don't know if it's gonna be her first preference or her second preference, but we always, always try to um, put that student into their first preference if at possible. Usually it takes a us into um, looking at where the chapter's numbers are, and we kind of make that decision based off of that. Again, we are always, always trying to go based off of what the chap the student prepped. Um, but again, we are going to be maxed to one of our great organizations and still getting that Panhellenic experience. It is something to note that the chapter and the PNN themselves will never know if they are a quota addition. So that's only something that staff see, Kylie and I see, are 
um, really figure method methodology specialists will see. That's our fancy um, name for the, the equations and everything like that, the software that does all the selections for us. So no, no one will know. No one will know. Okay, that's Hallie. Oh, Hallie was in alpha. We got her into alpha. Um, okay, so we went through our bid matching example. We went through our selections example. Again, separate things here from rounds one through three and then that preference round. We're gonna look into a little bit of data from last year's recruitment. So of the 11, of the 1,102 recruitment participants, 921 were matched and 181 were unmatched by the end of the process. So we started round one, day one, nine o'clock with 1,100 um, students and were matched, we were able to match 921 students at the end of the process. Um, 181 were unmatched. So sometimes that is self-selecting out of the process, withdrawing. Um, there is also something called complete release, which we'll talk about a little bit more on the, the slide next. Um, and then we have people that withdrew and then ISP unmatch. Um, something that we always tell students is having an open mind is such a crucial part of going through the Panhellenic experience. Sometimes we'll see that we are not going to be asked back by the chapter that we had the best um, time with, but keeping that open mind, keep going. Like I didn't get asked back to the chapter that I was like, wow, we hit it off, but I was still max or I still matched with an organization and I've had the best experience from my first year into the, my college experience up until now, I'm still serving with my organization. So always telling your student, keep an open mind, keep going. Um, we'll get through this together. Or if they wanna leave, they can leave and they can um, come chat with us and hang out. So um, of those that were unmatched, we had 66 join, 66 join through our informal recruitment process in the fall and the spring. So again, COB um, still is an opportunity for a lot of folks that don't match during recruitment. Okay, um, intentional single pref, ISP, we talked about that. Sometimes we don't make it above the quota line and we are an unmatched um, ISP. Withdraw, we've talked about that. And then release, completely released. So this is something um, that we see fewer than 1% students are actually completely released. Um, being completely released from the, the process is not getting invited back to a chapter during one of the rounds. It does happen, but like I said, it's fewer than 1% of everyone going through recruitment is completely released. Um, usually we see that it's due to a GPA, um, due to the student's GPA. The students, um, the chapters have certain GPA cutoffs that Panhellenic does not know because it is chapter specific information and we wanna honor their decisions, but they have GPA cutoffs that are, um, that limit, not in the limits, but there is a GPA cutoff in their bylaws and initiating rules that does not allow that chapter to initiate someone below that GPA. That is not to be, you know, picking and choosing with all of it. It is to look out for the student because if they do not have a GPA that is um, above their certain cutoff point, then that is also the chapter saying, hey, like I think this student needs to focus a little bit more on their schoolwork. And if they wanna try next year, like they can definitely try next year. Um, that's the whole point while we're here, we're in college, we're studying, we're wanting to get our, our degrees. And so that is usually what the, the point of when you see a complete release is because the student was, um, their GPA did not make it past the cutoffs for the, the organizations. Again, we do not know the exact GPA cutoffs for all of the 11 organizations. That is chapter specific information. Um, something to know about com being completely released. That is something that is handled by our staff. So myself or Kylie or someone else in our, um, in our office in the student life, we will always come to the student, knock on their door and say, hey, you know, this has happened. We wanna make sure you feel, um, you know, heard and seen. If you want to talk to us, you can always talk to us. Here's our number. Um, if you ever want to talk about the options that you have here at OU, you can always, always come to us and we can talk about that. Kylie and I do work for Greek students, but our main point, our main point of our job 
is to make sure that you feel welcomed and connected to this university. So um, you can always come talk to us. Even if you are matched from the organization, things went great, you can always come and hang out with us. But um, that isn't something that does happen through recruitment. Again, that is less than 1% of everyone going through recruitment in 2021 were completely released, about 11 students total. Okay, so this is after we went through COB and were able to add in some friends from um, that went through the informal recruitment process, we saw that our percentage for um, matched versus unmatched went up. So this is just saying we had 94.1% 94, 94 um, compared to 5.9% unmatched after the informal recruitment process. All right, so I kind of talked about it earlier. We're gonna be um, going through these next couple of slides. We're showing some data from 2021 recruitment that um, shows partial versus full schedules. We wanna kind of like visually put it up there because students sometimes, like I said, define their success depending on how many chapters they are invited back to. Hopefully you, you seeing this will help them, um, you know, calm down and just say, hey, keep going because we'll see it's not as common as you think to get all max chapters invited back to. So this is after round one. Um, at, during round one, we were from 1102, we started round one, day one, our total going through recruitment was 1095. Um, from you can see here on the screen, we had 60% had a partial schedule that day, 40% going through recruitment had a full schedule. Going into round three, um, we had 1066 students going in, 1066 students going through the recruitment process at that point. It was about half and half, about half the students had a full schedule, um, but a little bit more had a partial schedule. Going into round four, this, these numbers look a lot better. They look a lot higher. So again, round four is that last night of the, select, of the recruitment process. You have a max of two to attend to. So it's really cool to see that a lot of our students have um, that opportunity to have um, to make a decision between one organization or the other. Again, that um, it's just providing more opportunity with making those decisions. Like we saw in the bid matching example, it makes it really, really easier for our, our friends who have partial schedules um, because they know exactly where they're gonna go to that next day if they wanna be a part of that organization. So. We had 10, 1,020 students going through recruitment. 95.5 um, had two chapters to attend to that night. All right. As always, um, we are here to celebrate, empower, and uplift your students. Again, we're hoping that you will be partners with us as we are going through this experience and doing the exact same. We are so, so, so excited to welcome everyone to OU um, and, you know, if they want to be Greek, that would be awesome. We would love to have them. But no matter what, we are so, so excited to have them here in Norman, Oklahoma. All right. Um, before we just break for the night, I have a few more things to get through. And I am going to stop share and share my other screen. All right. My coworkers, can you see the panel and a website? Awesome. All right. So pan.ou.edu, that is our website. Um, here is just the general page for Panhellenic. You can see all of our councils right here, all five of our Greek councils from IFC Independent Greek Council, MGC, and MPHC. Um, the main hub for Panhellenic recruitment is going to be under this tab, Panhellenic recruitment. Um, this is where you're going to see our schedule, the guidebook, has a lot of good frequently asked questions in there tips about um, what we see people generally wear during each of the rounds and, you know, our financial transparencies, which will also show where that's located on our website. A more broken out schedule for you. Um, the check-in process. Your students should have received an email from me last Thursday. There have been some that the Excel didn't send them to. We're, we're fixing that for this week, uh, but you can email me and I'll provide my email in a bit that they can um, say, hey, I didn't receive the email. Can you email me what information I missed? So we will get that sent to them, um, but everyone was sent these check-in forms that you have to do before you come to check-in. So that's that pre-check-in and then it's the PNM code of ethics. 
Obviously you saw this, you're here. Um, and then our frequently asked questions. Lastly, I wanna show you under our Panhellenic resources, the financial transparency report. Your students are gonna be, it's just, this, this is something new to OU is actually, you know, um, presenting over this information during recruitment because just as there is a um, time commitment, social commitment, and there's also a financial commitment to these organizations. Um, it has been a thing that OU has, OU Panhellenic is disclosing this information since 2019, um, but this is the first year that we're actually presenting about it during recruitment. So it's really, really great. They will have access to the chapter presentations during round one. So if any time they just kind of block it all out, because it's going to be just a lot of numbers on a screen, they'll have somewhere to refer back to. Um, but just for your reference, your new member year, member in-house and member out of house, um, it is a thing and a requirement that anyone going, <clears throat> excuse me, any person, um, you know, matched to an organization, they at some point are expected to live in their chapter facility. They sign a contract that says that you have to live in at some point. Um, new member year is probably what you'll see coming into this first year. Member in-house year is when we calculate the totals of living in for that semester or for that year, excuse me. And the member out of house, they go down quite significantly because you're paying just your dues and your local and national dues. All right, I am going to quickly show a, let's see here, go right here. You may have been getting some emails, some things in the mail from our Panhellenic partners. These are vendors in the local Norman area that specialize on um, Greek items. And so we have, in the years past, you were able to come to like an in-person experience and get to talk with all of them and see their product. So um, with move-in and everything like that changing, we um, have filmed commercials for you. So we're gonna show these but we still have a bit more information to cover towards the end. So I hope you're able to stick around. All right, can y'all still see YouTube? Right, cool. Hi, my name is Katsy Johnson. My business is Giftly by Katsy. I do custom gift baskets for all occasions. As a Panhellenic vendor, I am promoting baskets for midweek brush gifts, and there will be five different choices. If you're interested in ordering a midweek recruitment gift, you can easily order by going to my website at giftlybycatsy.com. Once you get to the webpage, you go up to the top and click on order midweek recruitment gifts. This was the form that you will fill out to order your gifts. Hi, I'm Paige McAllister at Resonate Gifts. We're a local custom gift shop and we are excited to be offering midday gifts this year and midweek gifts. And one thing that's unique about us is we're able to not only personalize items with the house name, but also your daughter's name. So to order, you'll go to resonategiftsok.com and you'll just click on Rush Week Gifts and it will pull up a PDF with all the information you need to be able to order. So you'll click on this and it will pull up a Google form for you to submit your order. And then we have all of the gift items throughout the PDF so you can be reminded of what we offer. Hi, we're here at Occasions. Um, we are located at 2001 West Main in Norman, Oklahoma. And we are locally and operated uh, by the three of us. We are here before Rush, uh, during Rush, as well as after Rush. We offer recruitment gifts for midweek and midday. We have a huge variety of bundles and baskets that you can put together or we can personalize each item. We have sweatshirts, pillows, makeup bags, sleep shorts, and so much more that we can create the perfect basket for your rushie. You can order off our website at occasionspaper.com or you can call the store at 405-217-8467 and we can help you walk through and get exactly what you want for your daughter. Come shop with us. Hi, this is Helen from the Apothem on Campus Corner. We're locally owned and we carry all your needs for midweek and midday gifts. We are on Campus Corner right across the street from the university at 733 Ask, or you can shop us online at theapothem.com. We have a very user-friendly um, online ordering system 
You can also call the store at 405-447-2345. Come on over and shop. Thank you. Um, for midweek gifts, I have little sugar cookies that come bagged, um, mini cakes that you can uh, personalize the message for your daughter, um, and assorted dozens of cookies. Those will be available round one, day one, round two, and round four um, for her in the evening. Um, I also am doing an end of week big day gift. Um, so this will be delivered to your daughter's sorority house on the Friday of the first week of school. Um, just so she can have an excuse to go back to the house um, after the celebrations have wound down and she can celebrate the end of her first week in college, which is so exciting. Um, to find more information and to order, please go to my website um, and there will be an order form with all the information. Um, thanks. Hi, this is Devon and this is Betty Liz. Betty Lou's, you can order flowers and gifts by going to our website at BettyLou'sFlowers.com and looking at the OU Sororities tab. Feel free to give us a phone call at 405-364-2400 and we're happy to serve you over the phone as well. Christmas Expressions. I'm Kathy and we are proudly serving the OU Greek community for the past 43 years with great Greek gifts. We believe your daughter is unique and not prepackaged, so we offer a large selection of gifts to suit her style and your budget. We mailed an eight-page catalog to each parent which outlines our offerings for recruitment week and bid day. Please follow us on Instagram and Facebook. We can be reached at 405-360-5211 to take your order. Please remember that we fill orders in the order that they are received, so call now. For Recruitment Week, we offer a large selection of great gifts, snack baskets, room decor, and apparel. For bid day, we customize your gifts assortment with gifts, apparel, um, and room decor. We'll be open extended hours from 10 to 7, so please stop by and see us. We're conveniently located at 2214 West Lindsay Street, just east of I-35. Thank you for shopping local. We appreciate your business and look forward to working with you and your daughter while she's at OU. Hi, I'm Jason, owner of Woodchuck Creations. We are super excited to be a part of the OU Bid Day. This year we are featuring a few products that you can purchase for bid day. Uh, you can go online and find our study board, our brand new uh, acrylic art, or our stand-up letter set. These items will be available uh, to purchase individually or bundle uh, for bid day. Please go on our website at www.woodchuckcreationsllc.com or you can go on our Instagram at Woodchuck Creations LLC. One thing to note, because everything we make in our shop here in Edmond is handmade, we will not be able to guarantee delivery on bid day, but we will make every effort to deliver the week of bid day. And we can make special arrangements with you once you place your order. Thank you. Hi guys, I'm Brooke with Caymans. Cayman's is a lifestyle store featuring men's and women's clothing, accessories, shoes, home decor, fine jewelry, beauty, and so much more. We truly are a one-stop shop. We have had the honor of partnering with the University of Oklahoma community for over 40 years. By now, you have received our gift guides via email. Those were suggestions sent out to you for your midweek gifting. 
One of the main questions that we get asked is how does this process work or how many gifts do I buy? And that is really up to you, but we are here to help you in the whole process. You can buy one gift for one day or you can buy multiple gifts to be delivered throughout the week. It is truly up to you. What is so great about Caymans is that we have so many options ranging from a $5 beauty item all the way up to a pair of golden goose sneakers. So please call the store to order and we will walk you through, give you ideas, suggestions, and find the perfect gifts for your student. And as a Mormon, we would look forward to having you in our store. Hi, and welcome to Greek Necessities. I'm Jenny and this is Christy and we're the owners of Greek Necessities. We are so excited this year to be partnering with OU Panel and again to provide your daughter with Recruitment Week gifts. Group Necessities is offering a fun gift for bid day. This is a great way to congratulate her after a fun week of recruitment. Please follow us on Instagram at Greek Necessities 1 and you can also visit our website at GreekNecessities.com. We would love to help you throughout the year with all your sorority gifts. Okay, I'm gonna exit out of that. All right, and reshare my screen. All right, um, so we do have our great vendors that, like I said, we work with them. We organize whenever you purchase a present or a gift, a basket, whatever that might be. Um, they deliver them to our headquarters at Jim Thorpe. We sort them and we ask their your students row gamma to deliver it to their door. It is so nice that we partner with them um, and we're able to organize all that information with them and it makes that delivering process so much easier. Um, I do want to say that it is not a requirement to purchase gifts throughout recruitment. I know we sometimes get a lot of questions about that. Um, for some parents, like for my mom, um, we, like I said, first gen, new to everything we weren't in the position where we able to do that but she still made very intentional moments with me um you know by calling me and she left me a note on bid day for me to open up and throughout the process of like you got this i believe in you so um sometimes parents and families feel pressure to make these purchases like please don't it, know that it's not like a requirement or something that we expect from everyone. So we love them, they're awesome. They have some really, really cool products, um, but please know that's nothing that we have to um, enforce for anyone. But um, they are listed are also on our website. Let me reshare real fast so you can see where that is at. Under Panhellenic Recruitment, Panhellenic Vendors, and you can hover around each of their logos. We're also gonna put their commercial right here and on our main website, where you're also gonna find a recording from tonight's session. All right, so going back to the last few bits of information that we have to cover, um, some frequently asked questions. This is something that we saw last night that we asked about that that's really good to kind of touch on tonight. Um, so, this is just a scenario. Um, say we get our schedule back for round two um, and we don't like the organizations that are on the schedule. It's not what we expected. Um, something that we're not really excited to go into some of them about. It is a requirement. If you wanna stay in Panhellenic recruitment, you must attend every party that you are scheduled to attend to that day. A student is not allowed to skip out if there's one that they don't want to attend. Um, if you want to go through recruitment and you want to keep going throughout the process, you must attend every party. So please help encouraging your students with this. Um, they will know about it when we do our welcome meetings um, and they know that as an expectation for them to go to that scheduled party. At any point, you know, we are not being, um, you know, picking and choosing in that way or, you know, if students are unkind, they can they will always be taken to the Panhellenic headquarters office have a conversation with me and say hey we're these chapters are opening their doors to you they have spent a lot of hours preparing for you let's keep everything respectful and um like yeah we just ask that from both sides so it is a requirement to attend every scheduled party we also got a question last night saying you know 
if we have more registrants require, uh, sign up for this year, does that mean there are fewer spots to give on bid day? This is not the case because just as we kind of walked through earlier, when we set quota, we are taking all of the membership recruitment acceptance binding agreements, the, the Marabas, taking, counting all of those up and dividing by 11. And that's how we set quota. So no matter if we get a rise in registrants, which we get at about 50 or so each year, um, it doesn't matter if we have more people going through because again, we are setting quota in that way, just taking all our Marambas and dividing by 11. So it doesn't matter. There's just more opportunities and more friends to add to the Panhellenic community. All right. Okay, so here's our contact information. Um, tomorrow, which is just wild to say, we are moving from our office in the Union down to Jim Thorpe Multicultural Center. We do this just to be closer to the chapters. We're in the more centralized area of um, campus, but we are packing up and moving tomorrow. Just cannot believe it, y'all. Um, but we're going to be located down there. If you ever need to Google where we're at, quick Google search and you can find where that address is. But um, the office number that we're going to have listed right here. And then if you have a student that didn't receive your newsletter last week, um, I sent some of them before tonight's meeting. But if you just have questions after tonight, if you need anything, please um, shoot me an email. If you called me today, and I'm sorry, I, I, my number already got transitioned down there. So we weren't able to pick up on that phone call, but I'll definitely get back with you. So um, if you need anything at all, please reach out, phone or email. We're always here for you. Okay. That is pretty much it for tonight. Um, do we have any other questions from the team that you thought was worthy to answer aloud? We got them all covered? Wow, queens. All right, um, please let us know if you need anything. Thank you so much for giving your time. It, we talked a long time for tonight. So um, please let us know if you need anything at all. If you had other questions, again, you can always email us, shoot us a call, we're always here. Thank you so much, everyone. We are officially done.